Hello and welcome everyone. So thrilled to have you joining us today for the St. Ignatius College Prep Fair. We have an incredible lineup of institutions ready to talk all about their institutions. Just to let you know what you can expect here, each institution will have six minutes to share more, and then they're gonna stick around for the entire session and we'll have questions at the end. My name is Jeannie and I'll be your facilitator. Before we get started, just a few housekeeping items for you all. Your camera and your microphone are off, so our panelists cannot see or hear you today, but we do have a Q&A button on your screen, so please type your questions to our presenters at any time. Just a note that you don't have to wait until a certain institution is presenting to ask questions. If you have questions for any and all of our institutions today, go ahead and use that Q&A button at any time. This is one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check the schedule on the website, jump in a few more sessions after this one, and then this presentation along with all of the others are being recorded, and I will drop the address where you can find those recordings, strivescan.com forward slash Ignatius. All right, now we're going to get this party started. I'm going to turn it over to our first presenter. Kicking it off, we have Northeastern University. Take it away whenever you're ready. Awesome. Okay, great. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Sophie Bolton. I am one of the, uh, there we go. <laughs> I am one of the assistant directors of undergraduate admission here at Northeastern University in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, I'm so excited to speak with you all today. We have a very, very short amount of time together, so I'm just gonna go ahead and dive right into academics here at Northeastern. Um, here at Northeastern, we have over 270 majors within our eight colleges and programs, and that does include an explore program for undecided students. If you're not quite sure what you wanna do yet, that is totally okay by us. We also have over 170 combined majors. Now, a combined major is not the same thing as a double major, although you are more than welcome to do so. Um, a combined major really combines two areas of academic study that you're interested in into one singular major. Um, and students are still able to graduate on the same time frame as a student taking a singular major. Uh, so like I said, we have over 170 of them. Um, but a really popular one that we have is business administration and psychology. We have um, over 18,000 students here at Northeastern, um, but that doesn't mean we have large classrooms. We have really small class classroom sizes right now, about 14 to one um, with our amazing faculty members. We have um, just amazing faculty members. They're really respected industry leaders and experts in their field, and they act as additional advisors to our students. And we have four pillars of experiential learning at Northeastern. You'll hear experiential learning a lot if you ever come to campus. Um, we have global studies, co-op, research, and service learning. It is a graduation requirement to fulfill one of these pillars, but not all four. And in the interest of time today, I'm going to only focus on co-op. And co-op is our bread and butter here at Northeastern. This is our signature program. Um, what a co-op is, is a co-op is a period of six months, uh, full-time employment in an entry-level position during your college career. So it sounds a little bit scary, um, but what that means is you're not taking classes while you're on co-op. Um, you're not paying tuition. You are really focusing on your job. You're really working full-time as a college student, which is really, really exciting. Um, we have a wonderful amount of co-op resources at Northeastern. So students will take a co-op prep course before their co-op. Um, you will get a co-op advisor to kind of prepare you for that adventure. Uh, we have over 3,000 co-op employers that we work with at Northeastern, and these co-ops are in Boston, they're in California, they're across the globe. Um, we have someone doing a co-op in Bali right now, which sounds pretty amazing to me. Um, so students are doing really, really amazing things in co-op. Um, about 80% of our co-ops are paid, which is awesome, and co-ops are just a great, great way to figure out what you're interested in. 
Um, a little bit more about Boston. Um, maybe not many of you have been able to have the chance to come to Boston, um, but here in Boston, um, it is a great place to be a college student because we have 78 colleges and universities here in Boston. And that actually brings in over a quarter of a million college students to campus, not to campus, to Boston, that would be crazy, um, every single year. So what that means is there's always something going on. There is always something to do. Um, I'm from New York, but if you wanna go to Fenway Park, check out a Red Sox game, those are a lot of fun. And there are plenty of concerts there as well. And that is just a quick 10 minute walk from Northeastern. So we're also an extremely walkable campus too. We have um, four on-campus tea stops. Our T is our public transportation system. And we have four stops right on campus. So it's really, really easy to get to where you need to go if you know it is not walking distance. Um, but we are really in the perfect spot in Boston. Talking a little bit about your application. Um, here at Northeastern, we weigh your application, application equally each part. Um, so that means we review it holistically. Um, so we will take a look at your school report to see what courses were offered to you. We will then compare that to your high school transcript, see um, what courses you did decide to take and you know how well you did in those courses. Of course, we'll also take a look at your teacher and counselor recommendation. Uh, we do require both here at Northeastern. And then we'll also take a look at your personal statement and your activity sheet to learn a little bit more about you outside of the classroom. Um, I'm really excited to announce that um, we are test optional through fall of 2026. Um, we kind of started that a couple years ago in the pandemic and it has proven to be extremely successful for our students. We recognize how hard it has been to get into those testing centers and things like that. Um, so we are test optional for through fall 2026. Um, students often ask if that will be a disadvantage if you do not submit your test score, but it is not at all. We just weigh each other part of your application a little more heavy. And then last but not least, um, just a couple of admissions decisions, a couple <laughs> um, that we can offer you here at Northeastern. We have so many applications and unfortunately not enough slots, but we try and get as many people in as possible so you can get admission to the fall. Admission to the NUN program, which is a program where you will go abroad during your first fall semester as a freshman, and then you will come back and join us on campus in Boston in the spring. Um, our NU Bound program, that is a newer program where students will go abroad to our um, partner campus in London for a full year. NU Immerse program, Global Connections, I'm sure many of you are sick of virtual hybrid learning at this point, but that is still an option if you're interested in it and placement on the waitlist and deferral to regular decision. So that's all from me for now, um, but so excited to answer some of your questions later. Wonderful, what a great way to get us started Northeastern University, thank you so much. I am going to turn it over now to Drexel University. Take it away whenever you're ready. Hi everyone, good evening. My name is Emily Santana. I am one of the assistant directors of undergraduate admissions here at Drexel University, a proud alumni and a current student um, pursuing my doctorate here and a staff member. So I'm here to tell you all a little bit about Drexel. So here at Drexel, we are a comprehensive research university. We're located right in the city of Philadelphia in a neighborhood called University City. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. Here at Drexel, we're home to about 14,500 undergraduate students across 13 colleges and schools. Our students come from about 47 different states and 122 different countries. So not only will you be exposed to a diverse group of faculty members here at the university, you have the ability to be exposed to a diverse group of students here as well. At Drexel, we have over 80 different majors for you to choose from and over 100 different minors at the university. And we are a direct entry school, so that means you apply directly into your major of choice at the university. So when you're applying, you will list your first choice major and your second choice major. And while we're home to about 14,500 undergraduate students, at any given time, half of our student population is away on co-op. So because of that, we're able to keep our class sizes to a median size of 19 students and our students to faculty ratio 10 to 1. 
At Drexel, what really makes us unique is that we have this unique curriculum that allows our students to put into play what they learn in the classroom and get real world experience through their co-ops and bring that information and that knowledge that they learned in their co-op experience back into the classroom to share with their faculty members and their peers, creating a circle of learning that's beneficial for all of our students. And it's also beneficial for our faculty members because of the fact that they're able to keep up to date with what is currently going on in the workforce, as well as current trends that are happening. Um, Co-op is available for all students across all disciplines here at Drexel. And I'll talk a little bit about how co-op fits into the curriculum style here. So our co-op program partners with over 1,500 companies across 39 states and 40 different countries. 96% of students at Drexel complete at least one six month long co-op in their time. And students have the ability to graduate with anywhere between six months to 18 months of full-time work experience in their field. Um, we have co-op opportunities in 39 states and 40 different countries. And about 80% of our co-op positions are paid. And the median salary for those six months is around 19,000. Students will take a co-op 101 course at the university to prepare them to go out onto co-op. And they will partner with our Steinbright Career Development Center here at Drexel to prepare them to go out into co-op. Not only do you get an academic advisor at Drexel, you also get a co-op advisor who is specific to your college. And they're here to guide you through that process. In that co-op 101 course, they'll teach you everything that you need to know to be professional in the workforce, as well as uh, career preparedness when you're applying to your co-op position. So it's a really valuable experience um, and class for students to take before starting their co-op. At Drexel, we are a quarter school. So we have four academic quarters um, that are 10 weeks long with traditional breaks in between each quarter. We offer a choice between a four year one co-op, meaning students would complete four years of academic class time, um, 12 academic terms of classes, one six month long co-op in their third year and graduate after four years. And then we also offer a five year curriculum where students would complete 12 academic terms of classes, three six month long co-ops, a total of 18 months of full time work experience and graduate after five years at the university. The cost of attendance between the two curriculums is the same due to the fact that students have the um, option between the two and the fact that they're not taking any classes while they're away on co-op. So you're not charged tuition while you're away on co-op um, and, and you don't have to do your co-ops in the city of Philadelphia so you can actually do them in 39 states and 40 different countries. A little bit about student life here at Drexel. Drexel has over 300 student organizations for students to get involved in, 36 sororities and fraternities. Um, and we are a division one school in terms of all of our athletic programming. We have 18 combined, um, 18 men's and women's um, division one sports. And we put a play in the Colonial Athletic Conference, so the CAA. Um, we have ever made every major sporting team with the exception of football. And then we do also offer club and intramural sports for students to get involved in. So whether you are interested in being active and athletic or you're interested in Greek life or anything else, we have a lot for you to get involved in outside of the classroom and be connected to the Drexel community. A little bit about our location. We're located in the city of Philadelphia in what is considered University City. University City is home to not only Drexel University, but two other institutions for a total of 40,000 college students in the University City area. So even though we are in a major metropolitan area, you do really get the feel of being on a college campus because there are so many college students in this area. We do have a two year residency requirement where you are required to live on campus for your first two years. We offer 10 residence halls for first year students, three university sponsored apartments for our upperclassmen students starting your second year. We have three dining facilities, a um, regular buffet style, a grab and go, and then we have a residential dining hall that houses the Chick-fil-A on campus. We have major restaurants such as Starbucks, Sassy's, and Chipotle as well. This is the complete application requirement for incoming students. We are test optional for the fall of 2023. Um, and then you have my contact information on the screen. So if you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A for me. Thank you.
Awesome. Thank you so much, Drexel University. We're going to keep rocking and rolling here. We're going to go now to Hofstra University. Take it away whenever you are ready. All right. Hey, y'all. My name is Chris. I am one of our reps here at Hashi University, um, and I am one of our deans of admission, although I am not your dean of admission that will be working reading your end. I am happy to answer any question about the process or the university as a whole, anything that I can help with, so just reach out and let me know. But I'm um, getting a, a notification as a, a little bit to it's a little, um, a little about us. Uh, so we are a media institution show around 13 to 1. We have 6,500 students, about 165 majors and minors for you to choose from. And we have students coming from 48 different states, 78 different countries. Uh, apply to the university into of our majors and minors, not your specific major, uh, with the exception of a couple of dual degree programs that I will mention shortly. We are uh, really looking forward for a school of our size. We have a ton of clubs and organizations. Uh, that number is closer to 230 now. 21 D1 sports teams, much like Northeastern and Drexel, we are in the CAA, um, playing a lot of East Coast teams. Uh, our students are really service or uh, accounting for over 100,000 community service hours and every. Uh, and most of our students are living on campus, roughly 80% of the four year population. Uh, so you don't have to live on campus, but we do guarantee housing for all four years. We are located just outside of New York City, out on Long Island. I kind of describe it as a Goldilocks zone where we are right by the city, right outside of Queens, where you can see that Manhattan skyline from your window. You have that 35 minute train ride into Penn Station, and then you are right in the middle of everything. Um, but at the same time, if you're like me and you know uh, the thought of trying to fall asleep in the middle of the city is a little bit overwhelming, you want to change a pace, you want things to be quieter, come home to Hofstra. Um, at the end of the day, the end of your internship or whatever you're doing in the city, you come home to campus where you can kind of turn things off at the end of the day and really feel like you are at home. That being said, there is a ton going on around us. Being on an island means that we could be just to the north to south of us, about 20, 25 minutes in either direction. We have parks and green spaces all around us in addition to on campus. Uh, we have venues like the Nassau Coliseum right next door, where tons of national touring acts uh, and the New York Islanders play or have played. Um, and then we also have JFK Airport right down the road from us. So it's very easy to get to and from home or to a study abroad experience, which we have uh, a ton of. So there are a couple of academic programs that students are sort of specifically looking for. Um, although we have those 165 majors and minors, when I ran the numbers as of this past week, looking at current application numbers uh, for students interested in different programs, this of the programs that students are most interested in by the numbers. They're coming for School of Communication and School of Business. Of course, being right next to New York City means that there's tons of networking opportunities, uh, internship opportunities in the city, uh, ways to get involved with guest speakers and events going on in all five boroughs, just a lot of ways to get your feet wet in the city in those areas. Well, a huge job market after graduation. We also have our School of Engineering and Applied Sciences that is quickly climbing up the ranks. Um, and then our direct entry plans were very popular, very competitive direct entry medical and B programs, as well as our accelerated PA program and our four-year direct entry nursing program. So these are sort of what we are known for nationally when I hit the road um, across the country. This is what students are asking for. A little bit of finances here. 
the average scholarship that we were able to award a student just based on academics this past year was about $28,000 per year. And the average overall financial aid package was about $38,000 per year. Of course, if you're an above average student, you'll receive above average scholarship money. That's uh, going to continue from the investment in college into the return on investment. Of course, you want to know that every tuition dollar that you are spending is going to get you something in return. So not only do we see that our graduates earn $10,000 above the national average upon graduation, but that continues into mid-career salary where our students rank within the top 7% according to an independent third-party site, payscale.com. And finally, uh, for those of you wondering about application information when the time comes, we are test optional. We've actually been test optional as long as I've been at the university, about 10 years now. And so we were old pros at reading those TSOP apps when the time came, um, you know, when the world shut down. Uh, and we will work with you if you're not really sure where you stand with your test scores, if you're not sure if you should submit those scores or not, just reach out to your admission counselor or anyone in our office, and we will let you know which way is going to put your application in the best light. Uh, that being said, it's good to know that the average GPA for our admitted students was a 3.7 on a 4.0 scale this past year, um, and we are an early action school. So um, submit those applications by November 15th or December 15th for a non-binding decision and receive your decision by either December 15th or January 15th. Uh, I will drop my email in the chat for any questions that you might have. Reach out if there's anything I can do. Thanks so much, everyone. Awesome. Thank you so much, Hofstra University. We just uh, wanted to let you know, Chris, it cut out a little bit a few times, but we heard the you know, 99.9% .9 and you did a great job. Thanks so much. We are going to turn it over now and hear from Iona College. Take it away whenever you are ready. All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Ray Garum. I, I am our Associate Director for Admissions over at Iona College. A bit about me, I'm a, I'm a graduate from there, studied business management as an undergraduate student, marketing and international business for my master's, and kind of never left, have been there since. Uh, so a bit about Iona. Iona is located in New Rochelle uh, in Westchester County. Uh, it's just about 30 minutes away from Grand Central in New York City, 30 minutes away from Stamford, Connecticut as well. Uh, so we are conveniently located next to two major hubs uh, when it comes to looking for internship and job opportunities, which I'll speak a little bit more about a little later. Uh, I did want to show a, a photo of our campus map just to give you an idea of what our campus looks like. Um, it's a relatively small, leaning towards a medium-sized campus. We have a about 3,300 undergraduate students and just about 700 graduate students on campus, 20 to 25 students in a class, 14 to one student to faculty ratio. Uh, so you will not find yourself in a lecture hall. They are just regular size classrooms. A uh, second photo on the right hand side is actually a photo of the, uh, the city of New Rochelle itself. Um, so it is a suburban city. During the daytime, you get the nice city feel, but as the sun starts to set, you get the nice cool, calm and relaxing feeling. Iona is a liberal arts institution. We do have a School of Arts and Science, a School of Business. Uh, our students do not have to declare their major till their sophomore year. So if you're still undecided, uh, still trying to figure out what it is that you're looking to study, uh, you still have plenty of time. Now, within our School of Arts and Sciences, we offer programs uh, ranging from biology with the pre-professional concentrations to computer science, education, speech language pathology, social work, sociology, criminal justice, just to name a few. In addition to that, we also have our La Penta School of Business, which offers programs like management, marketing, finance, accounting, international business, information systems, um, and the list goes on from there. It is an exciting time at Iona. There are a lot of great things happening. And one of those great things is our recent partnership with New York Presbyterian Hospital. Uh, New York Presbyterian made a generous donation. Um, and with this, we've been able to partner with them and, and build a New York Presbyterian Iona School of Health Sciences. Uh, and it is currently going to, to be offering uh, programs in nursing, psychology, social work, speech, language pathology, just to name a few. These are programs that we currently have um, and we've had for quite some time. However, they will 
will be housed under our New York Presbyterian Iona School of Health Sciences. Um, some photos there to show what the what the building or what the space will look like. Um, it will be state of the art and it will have state of the art uh, equipment for our students who uh, will be under that um, that school. Now, in addition to academic programs, you also want to look at internship opportunities. Many companies are looking for that experience as well. As I mentioned earlier, just 30 minutes away from Stanford, Connecticut, 30 minutes away from, uh, from New York City as well. Uh, so when it's time to look for those internships and jobs, you're not limited to just a summer, you can have your internship during the school year. Uh, we find that many of our students have at least two to three internships by the time they graduate under their belt. Uh, these are some logos here of some companies that, that, that our students uh, tend to work with. Uh, we do have our career development center that works very closely with our students, helping them build uh, resumes, helping them with their cover letters. Uh, we bring in companies to host mock interviews and we host a variety of different events, uh, career services related. Looking at housing on campus, Iona does guarantee housing all four years. We have seven residence halls with a number of amenities uh, ranging from, from air conditioning to Wi-Fi in every building. Uh, but we do have suite style housing, communal style housing, and apartment style housing. Um, about 68% of our students live on campus. Uh, the other 32% either commute or live within a five minute radius. In addition to that, we have more than 80 clubs, more than 450 activities going on per year. Uh, so chances are, if there's something that you're looking to get involved in, whether it's with sports, performing arts, service work, academic or multicultural clubs, uh, that's something you will certainly find over at Iona. In addition to that, we have 21 Division I athletic programs, uh, very competitive programs, and we're very proud of our um, athletic teams and all of their accomplishments. The school spirit at Iona is off the charts. Um, our students really do support our student athletes um, at all of their, their home events. Looking at the application process, Iona is on the Common App, so you can utilize the Common application to apply. Essentially, Iona is looking for a high school transcript, typically looking for a solid B average. Uh, in addition to that, two recommendation letters and a college essay. Iona is completely test optional, and we have three deadlines. We have our early decision deadline, which is December 1st. That is a binding deadline. Early action, December 15th, and regular decision, February 15th. Looking at financial aid, 100% of our admitted students receive merit scholarships. The higher the grades, the higher the scholarships. In addition to that, Iona does offer micro awards to complement that larger scholarship, such as um, a community service award, performing arts, on-campus housing award. And Iona does offer financial, financial need-based uh, awards as well. Um, for that, you would have to complete the FAFSA, which you can do as early as October 1st. Uh, with that being said, tuition and fees are about $44,000 per year, and room and board is about $17,700. Um, but keep in mind, that is a sticker price. You always want to look at the net price, or in other words, how much does the school cost after you've received your awards and your aid? Uh, in addition to that, I know that social media is a big thing, so definitely give us a big follow. We are on all of the social media platforms, um, and if you do have any questions, you're more than welcome to, uh, to reach out to us. Thank you so much. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Iona College. I just want to put a plug that that Q&A function is live. So please do take advantage of getting your questions into our fantastic presenters here. We're going to turn it over now to the University of Cincinnati whenever you're ready. Hello, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Uh, my name is Erin stahl Kiefer, and I am the Regional Enrollment Coordinator for the University of Cincinnati um, for the greater New York area. I'm actually covering tonight for my coworker, Jen, who is based in Chicago. So I'll put Jen's contact info in the chat once I finish so you can reach out to her since she lives and works in your area for the University of Cincinnati. Um, she had a conflict tonight, though. So I will go ahead and get started since we have not much time. <laughs> Um, I am um, happy to talk about uh, our wonderful campus. We are a large public tier one research institution um, located in Cincinnati, Ohio. We have a population of over 46,000 students total. Um, that includes undergraduate, graduate students, all three of our campuses. When you're looking at our main uptown campus, which is where students from out of state are typically applying to, um, we have about 27,000 undergraduate students on that uptown campus. Um, we have about 4.3% students coming from us internationally, a, a little over 18% out of state, and about 24% identifying as racial and ethnic minorities. 
Um, so we have a diverse community that we are constantly seeking to make even more diverse to reflect that the city that we are a part of um, and that we do a lot of outreach in. Um, so at the University of Cincinnati, we have over 350 academic programs. Uh, we have a, many different academic colleges that you could be a part of. Obviously, I don't have time to go over all of the programs, but we do have uh, engineering, nursing, business, medical sciences, allied health, arts and sciences, education, criminal justice, design, architecture, urban planning. Um, so a lot of different things to choose from, and that's just a sample that I mentioned. We do have a 19 to 1 student to faculty ratio, which I always like to highlight because when you hear 27,000 undergraduate students, it sounds like you're going to be just a number in, on a roster in a classroom. Um, but we do have a small student to faculty ratio for our size, 19 to 1, and um, about 70% of our classes have 40 students or fewer. Only about 3 to 4% of the class sizes will be probably a little over 100 students in them, um, and those will be more of your general education courses. Um, we have an exploratory studies program that we always like to highlight. Exploratory studies is really our version of undecided. So if you're not quite sure what you want to study, but you know you want to come to University of Cincinnati, not a problem at all. Um, we have an entire center for exploratory studies complete with staff that will actually work with you to try to help you figure out what it is that you do like, what it is that you don't like, um, career paths that sound interesting to you, do different assessments, personality tests, things like that to try to pinpoint different areas that are going to work best for you and your personality and your goals, um, and then help you figure out the best advisement track to trans transition out of exploratory studies and into one of our other uh, majors in, in a different academic college. Um, we do also have our university honors program or UHP um, that you get automatically considered for as long as you apply by our early action deadline. Um, and we do it a little bit differently where it's not cl honors class based, but more honors experience based um, doing things like study abroad service learning, um, really doing different, you know, outreach and getting out there in the community. Um, we have something called the Bearcat Promise. The Bearcat Promise is really key to your time at University of Cincinnati. This is the university's commitment to you um, as a student saying that when you come to UC, you will not only graduate with a diploma, but you will graduate with a plan and a career path in the other um, hand. So you're going to be coming to UC to not only have a wonderful college experience, go to class and do all of that fun stuff, um, but you're also going to be coming to build a resume, to network, to have some sort of idea of what comes next. Um, so that's a big part of this Bearcat promise. And with that, 100% of our students will participate in experiential learning. Uh, we actually invented co-op or cooperative education in 1906. Um, and so we're very big into co-op internships, really getting that hands-on experience outside of the classroom. Um, the way that our co-op program works is that you do um, you don't take classes during the semester that you're on co-op. You're working full time and you will be compensated. On average, students earn about $10,000 per co-op rotation, and they're available in many different states across the country, as well as many different countries. Uh, sorry. And yeah, as well as many different countries. So a lot of options abroad, too, for that. Um, and then there's also some new uh, newer opportunities to co-op on campus in different um, administrative offices um, within the university itself, which is pretty neat for students, depending on, on your interests and your goals. Um, so we're really committed to making sure that you're making a really strong and good investment occasion and your time at UC. Uh, with that, we also have a lot of different ways to get involved, to find your community, your niche, uh, your people on campus. So we have over 500 different clubs and organizations. Um, we have Greek life, but we're not a campus where you have to be a part of Greek life to have a social life. Um, so it's there if you wanna participate in it, but it's not something that you feel like, you're gonna have to feel like you, you have to do if it's not something that your, suits your personality. Um, we also have division one athletics, um, probably hopefully <laughs> our football team did pretty well this year. So we're really excited about that and hopefully that momentum will continue. Um, but we do have D1 sports. And if you're interested in athletics, but not necessarily at the division one level, we have a lot of intramural and club sport opportunities as well. Um, and then many different um, identity based organizations and offices on campus to help facilitate different communities within UC uh, to make sure students are finding, uh, you know, a, a place and their their community on campus. The city of Cincinnati, um, we're about two miles from downtown Cincinnati. So what's really great about UC is that you get a traditional college campus only two miles from downtown uh, downtown city. Um, so which is pretty neat when you're thinking about wanting to have that 
college campus experience that maybe you've seen in the movies, <laughs> uh, but you also like the opportunity to be close to, and nearby to a city for all of the different social, um, cultural, and other opportunities like you know internships, co-ops, those types of things. There are 400 Fortune 500 companies located in Cincinnati. I believe eight are still headquartered in Cincinnati. Um, so again, a lot of professional opportunity there. It's been ranked as one of the top 25 um, cities for young people and one of the top five most affordable cities to live in, which is really key for uh, affordability. Applying to UC, we're on the common application. So that's your only way and method to apply to UC. Um, that will open August 1st for fall 2023. Um, we are test optional for fall 21 and fall 22, and we are in, very impatiently awaiting to see what's happening for fall 23. Um, so keep an eye on that. But other than your common app, we just need your transcript and um, letter of recommendation is optional. So pretty quick and easy admission process, but you'll want to apply by our early action deadline of December 1st for merit scholarship considerations too. And my time is up. So thank you all for your time and attention. Yeah, thank you so much, University of Cincinnati. All right, we've got one more institution to hear from now. Closing out this portion of tonight's event, we are going to hear from Union College. We're ready whenever you are. Hello, hopefully everybody can hear me. I apologize if there's any background noise, but uh, I'd like to introduce you to Union College. We were founded in 1795, right at the convergence of the Hudson and Mohawk Rivers in central eastern New York. Uh, so a couple of things that you'll, you'll recognize about uh, our college is the name, uh, and we talk a lot about uh, that name itself and associated with power, something you might not be accustomed to hearing about when we talk about a small liberal arts college. Uh, about 2,200 students. Uh, again, we have a residential campus. Uh, one of the things you should probably get familiar with is at Union, like a lot of other colleges our size that offer breadth of opportunity. Uh, Instead of talking so much or focusing so much on opportunity, we talk a lot about the expectations because we fully um, uh, intend for students to really engage and experience and not just to graduate in four years and say, oh, there were a lot of things that I could have done here. Uh, so the name union itself implies or very directly relates to connection and those connections run uh, wide and deep. Uh, you'll see uh, our president casually stroll across campus uh, other times he's kind of sprinting across campus or dashing on his bicycle, but on every journey, every, uh, whether short or long, he's connecting with our students. That's actually a photo of him doing a selfie down in that, that right-hand corner. Hey, uh, Dr. David R. Harris, who's our 19th president. Yes. Michael, I'm so sorry to Hello? interrupt. I wanted to let yes. you know that we're actually not seeing your presentation here. Oh, okay. Sorry. I will. No, no, it's okay. I know that you're having some tech challenges today. It's the best of us. All right. All right. How about now? So, yeah, there we go. We see it. Okay. All right. Sorry about that, folks. Um, this idea of can, um, really unites our campus. And we talk a great deal about becoming um, brothers and sisters through wisdom. So everybody brings that with them to campus, uh, as a brother or sister. Another thing that we do is we challenge each other um, and the just attempts to be inclusive, right? Because the term brothers and sisters excludes those that are uh, on the non-binary, right? So, so we even challenge that. And right now you have different committees of, of students, faculty, student members talking about that uh, particularly, as, as well as other history, uh, we talk and we value integration uh, along with the connectivity. So our students um, with about 40 different, 46 different majors, they can weave those into different types of programs, uh, double degrees. We have what we call um, uh, design your, or, or uh, kind of like design your own major. We talk about it as or organizing themes. The parents don't get discouraged when you hear your, your son or daughter say they're undecided uh, or they're creating their own major. It's really organizing these themes uh, and ideas around certain disciplines that they're excited about. Um, and students can do that and graduate in four years. We operate on a trimester system. So that allows students to choose classes three times a year, as opposed to more twice a year. 
and they get to meet with their professors at least 50% more than they would at schools that are on our system. So a lot of control is placed in the hands of the students. They can direct a lot of their own study, but they have faculty working with them as opposed to dictating to them. 85% uh, of our students are doing interdisciplinary type of programs. 82% of our students are doing uh, a senior thesis that in many cases rivals or at least prepares them for uh, the work that they'll do as graduate students. And a large, most recently, I think the most recent uh, data that we have is from the class of 2020, uh, 20, uh, and about close to 80% of those students went directly to graduate or professional school. We have uh, an idea or a, a belief that students will immerse themselves uh, and there's power in that. And we talk about exploring and engaging. So that's really where we, we lay the focus. It could be uh, international experiences, we study abroad. We have different relationships across the United States where students can study uh, outside of the classroom. Uh, the classroom itself on our campus that students engage in, uh, and we've never taken a break, uh, even during the, 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 I guess, the height of the pandemic. Uh, so we've been in class, and our average class size is about 20 across the board. First year, you're looking at about uh, 17 students. Uh, and that's just improving. We don't anticipate, even with larger classes coming in, uh, that we're going to have students ever waiting uh, to access or sign up for different sections. Uh, I mentioned inclusion once, uh, and I'll talk about it again briefly. I know my time is running short, but inclusion on our campus is not just um, it's not just a slide. It's not just uh, an office uh, that has folks that are helping students from marginalized backgrounds engage or connect on campus. When I talk about brothers and sisters or becoming siblings, becoming family on campus, we recognize that not many colleges are talking about becoming family, right? Where a lot of us talk about becoming community uh, uh, um, and close-knit. Using that word or that term family really is about making sure that we're all involved, that we're all preparing ourselves to have an impact, to lead in different capacities over multiple it's really how it could be athletics. About a third of our students participate in bar. Uh, you may find that you are included in um, programs through our Kenny Center, which is a fully funded faculty uh, and administrators who serve the sole purpose of connecting students with out and community service opportunities within the city of Schenectady. So inclusion from the day you arrive on campus, you are a member of one of our seven Minerva houses. Uh, those seven houses uh, operate the programs to allow students a platform where they can then share the wisdom that they bring with them across campus and across our community. So the faculty have their, their kind of castles where they uh, are leading the instruction, but our students through their Minerva House uh, also has uh, also a platform. And last year, throughout the course of the full academic year, the Minerva House has offered about 500 different programs. That's outside of the, the clubs and organizations, uh, fraternities and, and athletics. Uh, that's just the Minerva houses. So there's always something to do. So I'll talk really briefly, Union College, like my, my other colleagues mentioned, we are test optional. We've been test 14 years. Uh, we do have two direct entry or accelerated programs, one in medicine, one in law. Uh, those professional schools, however, do require testing. Um, we don't tell students that they have to apply for financial aid. Uh, we meet 100% of demonstrated need for all of our students. There's also merit-based aid. Uh, and then three years ago, our president, uh, Dr. Uh, David Harris, created a by which we could address those families kind of in the middle uh, who are oftentimes overlooked. Uh, so we have what we call Make Union Possible grants as well. Uh, and then Michael. finally, Union College, uh, in Yep, I'm so sorry. We've passed time here. So if you want to make sure that the contact information is in that check, I know people are going to want to learn more and, and reach out to you. I'm going to uh, move us. Yeah, I appreciate it. I'm so sorry. It's never enough time. Okay. Um, but I want to thank Union College and I want to thank all of our presenters here. And I'm going to ask them to join me on video here. I'm going to share my screen this time. And we're gonna move into a very, very brief uh, q and I've got time for probably one question here. So we're going to make it a good one. And that is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? We're gonna go ahead and go in the same answer and have each of our presenters give their response, kicking it off with Northeastern University. 
Yeah. Um, mine might be a little bit of a cop out, but I always say this at the end of my visits. Um, this is such a stressful time for high school students. You really feel like you can't do enough. Um, institutions are becoming more selective, things like that. Um, the stress really can get to you as a senior, but I always tell students that you'll end up where you need to end up. Um, it's going to be okay. You're, every institution is a great institution and you are going to be right where you need to be. Um, so I think it's important to kind of remember that when you're in the midst of the college application process. Um, for me, I normally tell students to make sure that they're reaching out to their college representatives and their admissions representatives. We're here to answer any question you have. And like Sophie said, it can be a scary time and a scary process, but lean on the support that you have at the institutions that you are applying to. It is our job to help you. And we are here to guide you through this process. You do not have to do this alone. So make sure you reach out to us. Uh, my advice that I give my students is as you're building your college list for every two institutions that really fit what you're looking for, add an institution that you think might be a little bit different than what you think you want. Um, you learn a lot about yourself by doing that and challenging yourself to find the things that you enjoy. And you might also find a school that's a really great fit for you, um, just keeps your options and your mind open. Emily stole my first piece of advice, but I'll go with my second one. Um, if you have the opportunity to do so, and if it's within your, your means, definitely take the opportunity to visit the college campuses that you're considering, uh, whether it's an in-person visit or a virtual visit. Um, typically, stepping foot on campus can really help you um, really see if this school is, is the right fit for you for the next couple of years. So definitely um, go on some tours, especially over the summer, if you have a chance to do so. I always like to remind students to look at deadlines, remember the deadlines, adhere to the deadlines, <laughs> don't forget about the deadlines. Um, and it sounds not so fun and exciting, but it's really important because there are certain deadlines that um, might mean you don't get considered for scholarships if you miss them, or maybe the program that you're applying to is really competitive and fills up quickly and you miss the deadline and now you're not going to get even looked at for that program or whatever the case may be, the deadlines are there for a reason. Um, so don't, and don't think that the deadline means that that's like the best day to submit it. <laughs> um, you also have to keep in mind that when you're applying to college, you're usually waiting on materials from your school counselor or um, a recommender or someone to submit other materials on your behalf. So if you're doing everything at the very last minute on the deadline um, and everything has to be in by that date, odds are that's not going to be feasible if you're waiting on somebody else to submit something on your behalf. So find out the deadlines, give yourself a week or two before that deadline and make sure you get everything in um, well ahead of the deadlines so that you're not rushing at the end. Um, very, very important. I would say um, my thing is always to, to be selfish. And I know that flies in the face of everything that everybody has taught you the first 15 years of your lives. Uh, but this process is really about you. I mean, it's a large responsibility, but it's yours. And uh, at the end of the year, you find the place that's going to fit you and suit your needs uh, and help you develop into that person you want to uh, want to become. And if you do that, and if you use the resources around you, you can still be, you know, be selfish and, and find the place for you uh, and having some great leaders and doers and teachers and counselors help you with that. Uh, but remember, it should be uh, first and foremost about you, it should be fun. Fantastic, everyone. Great advice all around. I want to thank you all for joining us. Just as we close out here, please keep in mind that this is one of many different sessions. You can jump into other sessions that are taking place right after this. So check out that schedule and join us for a few more. This session was recorded. And so you'll be able to get that recording at strivestand.com forward slash Ignatius. I put that link in the chat for you one more time. And then when you close out your browser today, you're going to get a very quick uh, five question survey any feedback that you can provide on today's event is most appreciated we look forward to seeing you in the next session thanks everyone have a wonderful evening